بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Assalamu alaikum everyone. I hope you all are doing well. This is the second video of the series. And just before we move on, I want to thank everyone for the support from the last video. And I hope we all learned something from it. So today I will be sharing a story from the life of Ibrahim Hadi. This story is called Puriya Valley and it is on page 28 of the first volume. So without further ado, let's start. It was the club championships in the year 1355. The winner of the games would receive a cash prize and also go to the country selection tournament. Ibrahim was at the height of his preparedness. Whoever saw one of his matches confirmed this matter. His coach said, This year, in the 74 kilogram division, no one can oppose him. The game started. Ibrahim defeated everyone one by one. He played four matches and reached the semi finals. He either fell his opponents or won with a high point advantage. I told my friend, for sure, one wrestler from our club will go to the national team. In the semi-final game, although his opponent was very famous, Ibrahim won. He went to the finals with a strong lead. His final opponent was Mr. Mahmoud K. That year, he was the winner of the World Army Championships. Before the final started, I went to the locker room to Ibrahim and said, I have seen your opponent play. He's very weak, but for God's sake, just be careful, dear Ibrahim. Wrestle well. I'm sure that you will be chosen for the national team this year. Then they went together to the mat. I went quickly and sat down among the spectators. Ibrahim went onto the mat. His opponent entered too. The referee hadn't come yet. Ibrahim went forward and shook his hands with his opponent with a smile. And then his opponent pointed somewhere among the spectators. In the back, I turned around and looked. I saw an old woman sitting alone on top of the bleachers with rosary beads in her hands. I couldn't understand what they had said or what had happened, but Ibrahim started wrestling very poorly. He was just defending. Poor Ibrahim's coach. He shouted and directed him so much that his voice cracked. Ibrahim did not seem to hear any of the shouting from his coach. He was just wasting time. Then Ibrahim's opponent, who was afraid in the beginning, became brave. He started attacking continuously. Ibrahim was calmly defending. The referee gave the first and the second warning to Ibrahim. In the end, Ibrahim got three warnings and lost. His opponent was the winner of the 74 kilogram division. When the referee lifted his opponent's hand up, Ibrahim was so happy. It looked as if he won. Then both wrestlers hugged each other. Ibrahim's opponent bent down and kissed Ibrahim's hand while he was crying. Both wrestlers were leaving the hall. I jumped down from the platforms and went to Ibrahim angrily. I yelled at him, wise man, what kind of wrestling was that? Then I punched him in the arm because of my anger and said, if you don't want to wrestle, tell us and don't waste our time. Ibrahim said calmly with a smile which was always on top of his lips, don't be so obsessed. Then he quickly went into the locker room, put on his clothes and left. Then I sat down in a corner. Half an hour passed. I became a little calm. I got up to go. In front of the gym was Mahmoud K. He came to me and said, are you Ibrahim's friend, right? I asked angrily, what do you want? Without introduction, he said, what a generous friend you have. Before the match, I told Mr. Ibrahim that I have no doubt that I will lose, but watch out for me. My brother and my mother are sitting on top of the bleachers. Do something that I won't be too embarrassed about. Then he continued, your friend did a wonderful job. You don't know how happy my mother is. Then he cried and said, I have recently gotten married. I needed the cash prize of the competition very much. 
You don't know how happy, how happy I am. I didn't know what to say. I was silent for a few seconds and looked at his face. I finally realized what had happened. Then I said, Dear friend, if I was in a place of Brother Ibrahim, I wouldn't have done such a thing after so much practicing and suffering. This is what great people like Mr. Hib Mr. Ibrahim do. I said goodbye to that man. I looked at the happy, smiling old woman out of the corner of my eye and left. On the way, I was thinking about what Ibrahim done. This kind generosity was not compatible with wisdom. Suddenly, I started crying. What a human being this Ibrahim was. From this story, we can see the meaning of Surah Ali Imran, verse 92, where Allah says, you will never achieve righteousness until you donate some of what you cherish. And whatever you give is certainly well known to Allah. On that note, I would like to thank everyone for watching and stay tuned for our next video. Stay safe. Wassalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.